Hey guys, we're going to go over equations of lines, in this case specifically slope-intercept form, which is y equals, hold on, I'm going to change this, y equals m, which is what this guy is, is our slope, x plus b, which is what this guy is, which is our y-intercept. All right, so given a graph, find these equations. Well, first of all, we need to know our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is negative 3. And we need to know our slope. Always rise over run. If I draw my little guy, he is walking uphill, so it's a positive slope. And he has to step up 1, 2, 3, 4 and run one two which means that my slope is just two so whenever i plug it in i have y equals two x plus a negative three which means that my final answer will be y equals two x minus three All right, find our y-intercept because it's the easiest thing to see. In this case, it's negative 2. Find our slope. Draw my guy. He is walking downhill, which makes this a negative slope. And he runs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And he rises, well, drops one, two, three, four, which means that my slope is negative four fifths. And whenever I plug that in, I have y equals negative four fifths x plus negative two. So whenever I write my final answer, Plus a negative is just minus 2. All right, my y-intercept this time is 0. My slope my guy is walking downhill, so it's negative, and he runs 3 and rise is 1. So my slope is negative 1 third. So when I plug it in, y equals negative 1 third x plus 0, which means that I can just write y equals negative 1 third x. And my y-intercept here is 1, 2, at 4. And then my slope is positive because my guy is walking uphill. And he rises 1, 2, 3. And he runs 1, 2, 3, which means that my slope is 1. So when I plug it in, y equals m x plus b. And you don't ever have to write 1x, so it's just x plus 4. All right, standard form is ax plus bx equals c. And a and b are supposed to be whole numbers. Um, but what happens is whenever we solve for y doing this, every single time that you solve for y, your steps are going to be to add or subtract the ax away, or to both sides. And then the second thing you're going to be is to divide by, oh, that's by. I wrote it wrong for y'all. Sorry. This is y. Okay. And the second thing you're going to be is divide by b on both sides. Those are your steps every single time. So my first step was to add or subtract ax away. 
my x is a positive 1, so I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides. These cancel, and y is equal to negative x plus 6. I don't have a number with my b, so I don't have to do step 2. All right, step 1 was to add or subtract ax away. I have a positive 5x, so I'm subtracting 5x on both sides. And don't forget, you cannot combine these. One has an x and one doesn't, so you're just going to write them next to each other. 2y is equal to negative 5x minus 2. And then the next thing I have to do was step 2, and it's divide by your b, which in this case is 2. Everything has to be divided by 2. So what that means is you're going to have 2y divided by 2, negative 5 divided by 2, and then negative 2 divided by 2, which means these 2's cancel, and I'm left with just y. Negative 5 over 2 is just my fraction. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. Subtract your x to the other side, or add it if it's already negative. Negative 2x plus 28. And then the second thing I have to do is divide everything by that b, which means it'll be negative 4y divided by negative 4, negative 2 divided by negative 4, and 28 divided by negative 4, which these cancel. It gives me y. This gives me, um, neg they can both be divided by 2. So negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a 1. Four, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a 2, so it's a half x. And then 28 divided by 4 is a negative 7. All right, I think I'm going to do one more, which is this one. I subtract x on both sides. Negative 4y is equal to negative x. And then I divide everything by that b. So it'll end up being negative 4 divided by negative 4y is equal to, remember that this is a 1. So negative 1 divided by negative 4x. These cancel and leaves me with just y. And negative and a negative make a positive 1 fourth x. All right, I'll leave the rest of those for later. Vertical lines. So vertical lines, because they pass through the x-axis, they will always say x equals, and whatever this x value is on your x-axis, which in this case is negative 1. Horizontal lines, because they pass through the y-axis, will always be y equals, and it's wherever that y value is, which in this case is a positive 3. Now we need to compare if lines are parallel or perpendicular, which is nice if they're in slope-intercept form, because both of these are my slopes, and I just compare them. Since they are the same, they are parallel. These are also in slope-intercept form. One is positive and one is negative, and they flip-flop, so these are perpendicular. What happened to my highlighter? Okay, these become more problematic because you have to solve for y, so it's just like we did over here with our two steps, okay? That was the whole reason we learned it, was to be able to do this. So step one is to subtract x on both sides. 2y is equal to negative x plus 2. Then step two was to divide everything by that b. So 2 over 2y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 2 over 2, which means this one gives me, that cancels y. This is just a fraction, negative 1 half x plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Same thing over here. Subtract 6x on both sides. 
negative 3y is equal to negative 6x plus 21. Then step 2 is divide everything by that b. So negative 3 divided by negative 3y is equal to negative 6 divided by negative 3x plus 21 divided by negative 3. These cancel and leave me with y. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. And then 21 divided by negative 3 is negative 7. Now we can compare our slopes. One's positive and one is negative. And remember, 2 is just over 1, which means it's flipped. So these are perpendicular. All right, I don't want to do too many others, so let's do this one, uh, number 10, I guess. Well, this one's already solved for you, and that's nice. So we have this slope, but let's worry about this one. So step one is subtract the x on both sides. Plus 27. Step two is to divide everything by that b. So you have 3 over 3y equals negative 12 over 3x plus 27 over 3, which means 3 over 3 cancels and gives you y. Negative 2 divided by 3 is negative 4. And then 27 divided by 3 is 9. Our first slope was negative 4. Our second slope is negative 4. So that means these are parallel. And we're done with our notes.